fun. Thomas Brody Shanks here. Welcome to An Actor Despairs. How are you doing, brother? Thank you very much. I'm doing very well. Man, it is such a pleasure to have you on. I, I really just like have such profound respect in everything that you've done with your career. You're, you're truly a superstar, man. I mean that with every word of sincerity. As an actor, you know, it's always, it's always funny. It's that, you know, any honest actor will tell you when you see someone who's their contemporary, you always like, oh, they're booking it and they're killing it. But man, for you, everything that you do, you, you, you choose such specific choices and, and you bring characters to life and everything that you've done. I, I mean, even starting from Love Actually to, you know, Godless and obviously Queen's Gambit and, you know, everything in between, man. It, it, it's been such a profound school just to steal from you, honestly. You're so good and, you know, <laughs> watching everything that you do and just the, the way that you or get so specific with your choices and things like Game of Thrones and, and, and other things, man. It's like you're a true character actor with a, with a beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's a, yeah, there's a lot of compliments there. Yeah. Um, I mean, every no, word of you. it, but uh, Cheers, man. It, 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 if it's cool with you, let's start at the beginning. You grew up in London, right? Yep. I'm born and raised in London, proper Londoner. My dad's from Scotland and my mum's from um, down South in Sussex. Oh, um, nice. They moved to London and had me and my sister here. Are your are your parents artists? Uh, yeah, my mum was a ballerina, and uh, and then has done a bit of acting and a bit of singing. Um, she teaches ballet now as well. And my dad's uh, he trained as an actor. He's also a musician, a drummer. Um, That's amazing. Keyboard and piano. So you you literally you know had the arts bug built into you. So I'm curious, you know at what point did it get activated you know was there were you doing music or like how did the whole you know not just acting but how did the whole art because i know you play music as well what what started yeah your yeah path? um hard to say really i mean we always had musical instruments around the house um and we grew up um with both our parents kind of around um unemployed artists yeah, um, which is kind of great because we always had our <laughs> mums and dads around, but there was no kind of sense of any kind of normal life. There was no nine to five um, drilled into us at all, other than school, really. That was the only kind of normal structure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we would tinkle around on the piano and um, uh, we'd, uh, we'd watch movies, we'd listen to audio books, we'd, um, you know, uh, all, all stuff that kids do, really. And... I saw my mum and my dad do this kind of um, amateur, am amateur uh, dramatic kind of um, readings of Edgar Allan Poe in um, in Prague, and it's the first time that um, I, I properly really kind of been to another country. And we flew to Prague and um, watched my dad do the Telltale Heart in Prague Castle at midnight, and it was creepy and sinister and weird. Wow. And I sat in the audience and I and I watched this audience look at my dad and how he just completely captivated them and manipulated them and made them believe that he was this entity, this strange thing. And I, I don't know, I just thought it was magic. That's so um, beautiful. And I, I, that, was the, that was the moment that I, I wanted to give that a go. That just looks, that also looks like, I was seeing my mum and my dad just having so much fun doing yeah, it as well. Yeah, totally. Um, I just thought it was magic, yeah. And so I, did wanted, I wanted to do that. Did you have the conversation with them that after that, like, hey, I'm really interested in pursuing this? Yeah, I wanted to give it a go. Um, and friends of ours at the time, um, they, they were also actors that were kind of sick of not getting any work. So decided to start up their own little agency. Oh, and so amazing. I just joined their books. Yeah, so I was the only kid on their books. Um, and they just kind of tried putting me up for stuff. And I just my mum took a photo of me in the garden and we used that as my photograph. And I just started going up for jobs and auditions and eventually landed a little BBC job. And that was my first real attempt at acting. So I never went to drama school or anything like that. Or I hated drama at school as well. I was a very shy kid. Yeah. So was um, I. Yeah. It's amazing. And how I just like playing really. I like playing at home. I would, I would put on voices and I would, disappear and, and play with my cars and scale electrics and train sets and star wars toys and um to me that's that's all acting was it was just playing around yeah the um, childlike still, wonder it kind of is yeah i still kind of think of that sometimes yeah. when i get a bit stuck in a role or in a moment or start overthinking something i'll think back to 
a kind of much simpler childlike way of looking at something and and just remember to have fun and play. I think yeah, that's quite I, an important I, I, quality think, in I think that's such a great tip because I think we tend to overcomplicate things the older we get and, and keeping it simple and keeping it about the work is, is paramount to, to success of any kind of performance, whether, you know, not critically, but just doing your best and being in the moment. But, you know, everything that you've done, man, it, it seems like it, 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 once that BBC thing happened, a, a lot of things started to happen for you. What, I mean, at least it looks like that from an outside perspective, was that kind of how it happened? Kind of, yeah. Um, yeah. I had a go um, and it was fun. Um, it was actually quite a hard shoot in the end. Um, it was very, very raining, very, very, very cold. And um, uh, the, the crew wasn't great. And uh, like half the crew left, I think. And oh, no. First stormed off the set. I mean, it was it, it was a quite um, it was quite an intense shoot. <laughs> yeah. um, but at, it was my first one. So I loved every second of it. I wasn't, yeah. I, I wasn't fussed by it at all. Yeah. Um, and then once that finished, um, yeah, I, I then got another one um, and that took me off to Ireland um, and I got to see beautiful Ireland and get involved in that. And then I went off to Canada and did one there and I realized I was being kind of traveled around and um, one thing led to another. And then, yeah, uh, I did something in France. I did a mini series in France and um, and then Love Actually. Yeah. And then from Love Actually, it was just kind of. Yeah, of um, course. And, and before we get to the love, actually, you know, tell me being young and getting on these sets and working with a lot of adults, you know, what, what helped you, you know, figure it out as you went? Was it, was it trial by fire? Were your parents helpful? And, you know, did you work with a coach? Like, what was your process? Um, I mean, uh, uh, not an acting coach. I, uh, I'd have to, t uh, first job I had to do like a West Country accent, like a, like a farmer's accent or one like that. So I had like a, a voice coach. So that was the only coaching I really had. Yeah. Um, and then my mom and dad, I mean, they would rehearse only to the point where I would learn my lines. Um, they wouldn't really necessarily give me that much advice. Yeah. Uh, it was just me kind of figuring out as I went along, really. Um, I, I just enjoyed being on a film set where um, I, I hated being as a child. I hated kind of being spoken down to and, 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 and molly coddled and spoken to like a child. I liked it when people just spoke to me like a person. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I hate. I didn't really get on very well at school because I didn't like the whole. I, I wanted to talk to a teacher like a kind of like my equal, really. Um, yeah, of course. I didn't, I didn't like. The, I didn't really ever like the hierarchy thing. But so on set, um, I was suddenly I went from being like a school kid and just some little kid that people kind of pinch the cheek and kind of coochie coochie coo. I was uh, I was taken a bit more seriously, and um, I was there to do a job, and I was watching all of these amazingly talented people be very good at their job, and you know that you get these amazing. Um, sets that are designed and then built by craftsmen and then you get uh, amazing props and um, uh, costume design and uh, makeup and everyone's just so good at what they do and you get to get to do your bit and that to me was just so cool um, that I had a kind of sense of, I had a responsibility and yeah. I loved that um, it was really cool it was addictive that's the main thing I liked about it and when you were getting these credits in, in France and Canada, do you feel like this was kind of your film school, you know, learning, you know, how a camera works yeah. and the movement and, you know, basically. How, I still how think of it like that. You do. That's amazing. Still, yeah. Every every job I, I learn something new on. Um, uh, um, I don't think you should ever stop learning. Um, no. You, you, you shouldn't think that you've got it all. There's always something new to learn. And that's what keeps it. That's what keeps you enthused and excited. Yeah, I think the curiosity is, is is what makes, you know, the next every project, you know, so exciting, you know, is to be curious and to learn this. But then, you know, landing in something like Love Actually, I imagine, you know, at first, you know, when you do a film, nobody knows how it's going to come out. And, you know, obviously that's become in time probably the most iconic Christmas movie ever. But when you got that, I'm sure it was just, you know, a holiday film. What was it like, you know, at least working with titans like Hugh Grant and Colin Firth and Liam Neeson? Was that something you were aware of that young or did you not really know who they were yet? Kind of. I mean, I didn't really know who all of them were. <laughs> yeah. um, to me, there was just more people to work with, more people to learn from. And I just, I just saw it as an exciting prospect. But I did. I recognized a few faces and a, and a few voices, maybe. Um, um, but I, I didn't look at them any differently, really. I just looked at them as people who are obviously quite good at what they do because they've yeah. made it this far and um 
um, I'm I'm also with them, so I must be doing something right, and that's cool. Yeah, that's fun. That, that was that was kind of it, really. Um, and Liam, I mean Liam Neeson was absolutely lovely to me. So nice, so kind, so gentle, um, and and took me in under his wing, really, and 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 I really felt like he treated me like his son at the time. It was it was a very enjoyable thing to be around him. I think he made the experience for me um, much easier, just because it was there was nothing to worry about. That's so cool. I, I love that, man. And, and one of the reoccurring things I'm seeing in a lot of your performances is that the dedication to, you know, an action or, or the props or whatever is necessary of the character. You know, in Godless, you have these amazing tactics with the guns and the way you can shoot. And in Love Actually, it seems like, you know, you, you, you really did learn to play the drums. Is, is that true? Yeah, my dad taught me because my dad oh, was a drummer. That's awesome. Um, no way. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so, so cool. it was, um, yes, it was hours and hours and hours of listening to that song over and over and over and over again <laughs> uh, in right. my granddad's basement. Yeah. <laughs> the holidays must be a weird time for you, man. I'm sure you can't travel yeah. any airports. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no, Christmas time is, uh, yeah, Christmas time is a no-go. Yeah, 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 stay at home. That's amazing, man. And I'm curious, you know, when, when that film came out, you know, it, I know it was it was successful, but it it really kind of picked up a, the iconic steam a little bit later. Is that is that true? It, it picked up what? Oh, the, the iconic yeah, status. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, I think something has to be around for a while before it becomes iconic. I think yeah. that's just kind of what what needs to happen. But it's been going every single Christmas since it released, which is yeah. quite insane, really. And it doesn't show any signs of slowing down. No, it's not. It's it. If anything, it's actually increasing. Uh, like you said, because it's now reaching like kind of iconic status. Um, yeah. Which is, you know, it's great, really. It is great. Yeah. <laughs> There's not many films like that. Um, yeah. That stand the test of like a Mary Poppins or a Sound of Music or a Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or something like that. If it can be like one of those, it becomes a classic. I mean, that that's great, really. Well, I mean, that's why I, I, I wanted you on the show and I love your work so much is because, you know, what you do when, you know, a reoccurring theme on this podcast is the separation between good acting and great acting. And good acting are people that, you know, just can play a personality and they can make a living out of that. And there's no, no shame in that. I get it. But, you know, great acting are actors that go above and beyond and build a character that is really a shot at immortality because when you deliver something with, with such truth, it lasts forever because people relate to it. And that's why I think your career has just been so special, man. You, you really do the work and it's so beautiful to watch. I'm curious after having a film like that, whether it was, you know, the iconic thing we talk about now or not, but I imagine you had a little bit of room to decide what you wanted to do, or, or is that not the case after that? Um, after that, no, I just kept, I just kept doing what I had done before really. Um, it, it took a long time to sink in that that film was, successful and and then what successful even really meant um, yeah that was not something that i planned for at all not that i'd planned much at that age <laughs> I, um, I don't think any of us do <laughs> no but it was also the first time being recognized on the streets and having to deal with that which is incredibly exciting at first um but then can also be kind of alienating especially when you're at school and yeah um, you know people can get jealous and 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 think that you're uh you know better than them in some ways or so all of that kind of started to come about. I suppose the kind of the the negative side to success, which is uh, kind of a, an odd thing to think about. You see, success is only being a positive thing. Um, what what buoyed but you? Then, um, what's that? What buoyed you during this time? Because I imagine you know doing these films and then coming back to school and then being this kid was was really tough. And you know to find an anchor in that time can be really hard what, what was your parents was it the work like what yeah. what anchored yeah. you it's um it's it's parents and it's uh i mean it, it's a good i mean you can find parents in any they don't have to actually be your parents you know yeah it's it, close people to you real uh, like anchors rocks that you can rely on true true people i mean what you're talking about truth um, yeah. you know great acting being centered around truth i think um good people are uh, centered around truth and, and a healthy mindset is centered around truth also um but it's quite easy to kind of um buy into the uh the kind of the, the, the glitzy side of the world yeah uh, the kind of slightly fake side of the world perhaps and it is it is all it is all a bit fake because it's not real yeah but if you buy into it and you start believing that then um, then it becomes dangerous as opposed to actually being quite fun 
Yeah. Um, so you need people who are just, you know, normal and know, know you for who you are and love you for who you already are, not what you, what people who don't perceive know you, you as you, or, you are or perceive yeah. you as. Yeah, that's and, not and as important. Was it difficult for you to maintain an education while getting these job opportunities? You know, did, was that a delicate process of, of choosing work that didn't conflict with school or did, would, would you just be homeschooled on sets when you had to be? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of impossible to keep up with traditional education schoolwork, yeah. Um, yeah. Because just just there's not enough hours in the day, and you're a child that can't handle a, you know being awake that long and having a concentration that lasts that long. Yeah. So you do end up kind of falling behind, evidently. But um, I had a tutor that I liked, and so I would request him. So we we were able to build up a rapport and he got to know me and then he got to also know my school and my teachers and they had a good relationship. So that made the process a lot easier. And he was also very good at just trying to incorporate what we had around us. So if we're on an amazing location, we try and find out some history about that location, wow. go for a walk that also kind of classes as um, physical exercise. Um, there's lots of ways of kind of, or maybe sit down and paint the landscape or, um, go ask the props departments, um, you know, the difference between a Saxon sword and a Roman sword. Um, there's lots of different ways of learning. So I think yeah. my education um, actually increased, but my schoolwork was certainly affected by it. Uh, yeah. But I was learning stuff that um, I wanted to learn more about anyway, including like cameras. I'd, you know, as a kid being fascinated with cameras and stuff, the, the tech guys would just give me B camera to play with and I'd sit on yeah. there. And it was back when we had film as well. So I learned how to change film. I learned about 35 millimeter and checking the gate and were most all of these that er stuff. early projects like Love Actually and all these other films where they shot on film or was that still, you yeah. know, it was, that's awesome. That's, yeah, yeah. That's cool yeah. that you got to experience that world before, you know, I mean, I, I hope it lasts with the certain filmmakers, but you know, as, as we know, digital is cheaper. So I'm curious, you know, you started a production. Yeah. Uh, you started it's, uh, it's cheaper, but it's also uh, good. Um, they've got so good now with digital. Um, yeah, they really have. Uh, so it's amazing to watch just the the changes in technically, um, and they've got so small too and lightweight. Yeah, so you can put I know. Them on amazing gimbals and send them off on drones now, and like, or th you don't this have phone, a big old can, helicopter, and you can yeah. shoot 4K on your iPhone. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. No, it's great. Everyone can be a filmmaker now. Yeah, um, which is quite cool. Did you feel a yearning, or do you feel a yearning to to one day direct? Perhaps one day. Um, I don't know when that day is. I think it will just kind of come along and bite me. Yeah. But I, I feel that there's certainly some juices that are there enough that that could be a possibility. Nothing at the moment. Um, but yeah, perhaps one day. Yeah, I could see it happening for you, man. That's awesome. But you did start a production company for a while, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, that we've closed that now, um, just because things didn't quite work out. But um, that was to make a, a short film. Actually, it was a, a script that my mum found in the attic when we were going through it once in the loft, and it was a um, a little short story that my great grandfather had written. Yeah, he was quite a good writer. Actually, he wrote lots of things, little strange poetry. And, uh, anyway, my mum fell in love with it and. Um, wanted to make it into a short movie so we set up the production company to do that and um we shot that on film as well actually we shot that on no way mil. wow yeah which is quite cool we went to an old film place and we, they just gave us all the end cuts of loads of stuff that we spliced together and managed to make some reels out of that's so um, awesome we man. shot that yeah it was cool so it was basically just for that one that one short really Wow. I love that though, man. You did it. You know, that's, that's the coup at the end of the day is being able to do something like that. And, it, you know, I've seen on, on, you know, your filmography that you do do shorts from time to time, even when you're not uh, part of them. Right. You know, like early on you were doing some, some really awesome shorts. Yeah, no, I mean, if it's, if there's, if there's talented people out there to be worked with, then there's stuff to be learned from them. And um, if I can teach them some stuff as well, then great um and you can pass things on and you uh yeah i'm not snobby about stuff if something's good then it's good yeah um you, good writing is quite hard to find even in hollywood yeah um in, in particular in hollywood yeah. um so i mean good writing you should just um you should always go for good writing good writing normally equals good product 
and, and, and I'm curious, you know, brother, right as, you know, before Nowhere Boy, were you tactically opening up to U.S. projects as well? Did you have U.S. rep then? You know, was that something that you were interested in or, you know, were you focused? Um, I think it was about that time, actually, probably maybe a year before. I think I got representation when I was about 18. Okay. I went to L.A. and um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was 18. And I did Nowhere Boy when I was 19. Yeah. So, yeah, it was about that time. I mean, yeah, like I said before, I mean, I'm open to anything and everything as long as it's, uh, as long as it's, yeah, as long as, long as it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ideally, about, really. at the end of the day. <laughs> it's quite simple, really. Yeah. But. What? How was it playing Paul McCartney, you know, being British? Obviously, it's like, you know, the best export maybe of, of all time musically, you know, was that, was that a really cool experience to dig into that whole yeah. narrative yes I, I mean yeah i mean uh it's the beatles yeah it's, um, it's the foundation of modern music um no it's amazing um and i was 19 as well um we shot bits in liverpool and some of the other band mates they were just they were actually liverpudly and band so yeah I mean, they were they were they were they were even more enthused about the prospect of playing their idols um so we had it was, felt a real sense of being in a band and young and, um, you know, hanging out in the hotels and being a bit naughty and then going to work and kind of living the life that they would have lived. And, yeah. Uh, God, no, it was great fun. The cars, the the, the suits, the quiffs. Um, yeah. And being Production on stage design. and playing guitar. Yeah, well, it was great. Great. Yeah. And, and the script, the story, so wonderful. I mean, I didn't really know how tragic... Um, John's upbringing was and you can that then make sense because he's you know he's such a kind of in his music he kind of um he's kind of squeals like a like a hurt baby sometimes yeah. you know he's quite um it's quite dark his voice yeah yeah and I'm, scream and 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 you had already yeah, so played it's fascinating the to learn about that too you already were playing the guitar at this time but was that cool you had to learn it left-handed right like McCartney yeah yeah how I was did. that yeah um <laughs> um, frustrating I, I, i'm a skateboarder i can't even do you know uh what's it called switch foot on skating man i can't even imagine playing yeah. guitar yeah no it's um weirdly enough i got the, the the hand that does the chords and the strings that that somehow was okay it was my other hand it's my strumming hand oh wow that, um I, I just couldn't get down. I kept missing it and like slamming my thumb into the strings and I kept cutting it open. Yeah. I kept bleeding all over the guitar. Yeah. Um, which wasn't great. But um, I, we got there in the end. But I mean, also my guitar that we were using was, was pretty knackered. The action was almost completely gone. So it didn't really sound very good anyway. So I could play <laughs> it a little bit on the guitar. Yeah, it's the guitar's fault, man. I love that. Yeah, That's yeah. A- and, and at this point, you know, in your life where you, you know, cause I know you play, were you, were you doing shows of any kind on your own or was that something just more that was a recreational hobby? Um, it's always been there. It's just been a recreational hobby, really. I can't, I thought about it and, uh, and I have been in a band. I've, I've been in my mum's band for a bit. Yeah. And um, the, the thing is, is that every now and again, I just got to go, Oh, sorry. Um, I've got to go off in two weeks for about five months. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and disappear and so that's not great if you're in a band yeah um so that that's the main reason for not doing that but i lo- i mean i love it and it's something that will always be present in my life and around and it's great when you do something like a nowhere boy um, yeah or, lo- or learning the drums on love actually where you where you get to either learn something new that you would never have bothered learning or um or get to implement something that you love already and get yeah. to play it through the guise of another character that's yeah that's great and in another time period in another time yeah that's so cool man i love that i'm curious you know because obviously you know living in in the uk theater is such an integral part of you know that the elizabethan history was theater something you've ever been interested in or was it always film and and tv for you um i have been interested in it um not so much to be on the stage but I uh yeah growing up I my my dad was in lots of like old rock and roll musical my dad was in the Lion King for many many years actually no way um yeah yeah which is great I, so I used to love going and seeing him play the different characters he played Timon Scar and uh what's the crazy 
Ed, Ed the Oh, Aina. yeah, yeah. And Zazu as well, yeah. Yeah, he had a go at everything. So, uh, yeah, so I love, I love the magic of the theatre. Um, and my mum, like I said, was a ballerina, so she grew up on stage, really. Yeah. Um, but for me, yeah, there's nothing like going, sitting in a... It's like going to the cinema, you know, you sit with strangers and you laugh together and uh, you cry together and you, you that, that murmur at the beginning before the play started where, where you can hear the orchestra kind of warming up and yeah. you know, the, the hustle and bustle of people trying to find their seats. It's, you, you're aware that something magical is about to begin that will only take place and exist in this one moment, whereas yeah. a film you can kind of put on again and it, the performances will be exactly the same. Yeah. These performances are completely different every night. Um, so there is something hugely magical about it. I've just never really, never really got into it on, on a personal acting level yeah. before. Um, I've done a couple of fringe shows just to kind of oh, really? feel my way out with it, um, which in some ways actually, speaking to actors who do do a lot of stage, they say it's more intimidating because you can hear someone eating Christmas yeah, the potato chips or the cell right phone text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there may only be 50 of them, but they're right on top of you. Um, yeah. And you can see them and smell them. Um, so I've only done that. Um, but I, the other thing is I also get kind of bored quite quickly. And I, and I like to move on. Uh, I don't like doing multiple takes. I don't like over rehearsing. I like kind of working with the spontaneous moment and the yeah. flow that happens organically with that. So I've also often wondered if I got stuck in like a six month show or maybe a year or two years. Some, some of them. Uh, my dad was in it for six years or something. Um, I he was I in Lion King for six there, years. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm keep. Yeah. No way. <laughs> Talk about keeping yeah. it fresh, man. That's hard to do. Well, he did it in German at first, which is oh. even harder. He doesn't. Are, even, you, are you German? Didn't even speak German. No, oh, not at all. He just <laughs> went off and learned how to do it in German before he learned how to speak German. Oh man, I'm gonna have to get your dad on the podcast. That's awesome. I love yeah, it. It's quite amazing. <laughs> so, man, I'm so curious because. You know, I have a lot of friends that are child actors that have done the show and, and some have really struggled to make that transition into adulthood. And, you know, so few ones, you know, like Leo, Christian Bale, you know, Joaquin Phoenix have done it successfully and you've done it. I mean, you've just been incredible, man. I'm, I'm curious after Nowhere Boy and things like that, were you trying to to choose different material that showcase something you don't feel like you got to show yet or learn something more about a character that just interested you? What, what was your, I guess I'm asking, what was your North star? What guided you? Um, I've often wondered that myself and um, I'm not really sure what it is really. Um, I kind of just go with the flow and see what happens. I, I obviously I get inspired by people and um, and, and circumstances and, and experiences, but I, I do love the thing of not really knowing what's next and what's going to happen. And people often say like, what, what's your dream part? And, and to be honest, I don't really know until it's yeah. kind of put in front of me. And then, I, then I start going, okay, can I do this? Am I, is this even possible? Is this me? And it becomes a kind of a, a challenge and you go, um, I wasn't expecting to do this. I had, I had no plan to do this, but I'm doing it. And um, that's kind of part of the challenge and part yeah. of the kick too. Totally. Um, so I like just kind of going with the flow and seeing what gets handed my way. And um, I quite like the the shock factor of going, oh, okay, I could do a cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll play a cowboy. Yeah. The cowboy. Yeah. Whitey was so good. I, Godless, man, you're incredible in that role. It's just, you know, it's hard. It's, it's hard to get material no, so like fun. that, let alone, <laughs> but it's, it's just, you, you brought it to life in such a beautiful way. And there's yeah. it's just such an immense, you know, I guess really what, if I had to localize it, there's an incredible energy about you, brother, that just, you're, you're a Titan, man. You, you bring truth to characters in ways that few actors are, are, are lucky enough able to do. And it's, oh, it's, thank you very much, man. It means so much to me because it, 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 I think at the end of the day, what we do as actors when we watch other actors is we inspire hope, you know, like if, if I could ever do one, one hundredth of what Thomas did in that, I'll, I'll be happy, you know, and, you know, man, that's what I love yeah. about watching you work and, you know, talk to me about, you know, something that speaking of, of just a total shift, like Game of Thrones, what was it like doing something so sci-fi, well, I guess fantasy is the genre, is it, was it hard mm. to bring truth to something like that? That's an interesting question. Um, yeah, you have to be careful with something that's uh, fantasy or sci-fi. Yeah. Um, because, like you said, the truth is very important. But, I mean, yeah, the scripts are very good. And 
Um, the people involved are very good as well. Um, uh, from cinematographer to um, the costumes are ridiculous. Like the sets are amazing. Uh, it's shot in Ireland um, and uh, the Irish are amazing as well. Yeah, um, yeah. In terms of keeping people grounded. They don't let anyone get on their high horse. They're um, they're Except about Conor being, McGregor, they're, they're I guess. A very real bunch of people. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah he's the one exception. <laughs> but that's awesome, man. Was that was that a fun time doing something just so different? You know, like oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're they're a great fun. Really, really, really nice group of people that made me feel very welcome very quickly. And you know, everyone would hang out in the same hotel bar, and so we just wander down to the bar and see who was in. And um, it would normally be someone from the car because we had um, two whole unit shootings. Yeah. We had Dragon Crew and um, what was the other one Wolf. Wolf, yeah, Wolf yeah. unit. Um, so we had two simultaneous whole productions going, and then they would then splinter off into other productions. So yeah. you, you could even have like four productions going at the same time, which is just quite insane, really. The logistics of it all are nuts, but it meant that you know you quite a few cast members would be in the hotel at the same time so we'd all go out together we'd all hang out together um and it was uh yeah it was a really fun experience uh, that's really fun that's beautiful man well i i know we're a little short on time today so i apologize if i'm moving along quickly but you know that's talk right. about talk about you know something like death of a superhero we're doing indies like that was that really something you've always been interested in and doing a cool you know unapologetic ind- independent film yeah i mean like was, uh, well, Again, shot on Ireland, weirdly. Um, oh, really? Getting, no getting way. Back to Ireland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was playing an Irish kid in that, and um, that was fun to get into the accent of, you know, being a proper Dubliner. Yeah. Um, uh, but no, it was, uh, I mean, I loved, yeah, that was an example of really getting into the mindset of um, someone that's so kind of hurting and twisted and, um, and also dying from cancer, but then doesn't want to have any of the guilt of that. He just wants to be a kid. And, you know, it's quite emotional, quite hard work, but I enjoyed kind of pushing myself to, to the limit of kind of what was comfortable, you know, and uh, I had to shave my head and shave my eyebrows off. And Wow. So um, you didn't, you really did it. Wow. That's so amazing. I appreciate that. yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. which yeah i mean gave me the appreciation um of of people who are going through that because it's just that just that fact kind of alienates you already the fact that you just look different you look kind of weird and you look like you've got cancer yeah you know? and then you get this kind of you get these sympathy looks and it's horrible when you're trying to actually instill some drive into yourself everyone's looking at you differently like you're ill and um i found that um really complicated but really interesting um, to play around and i got to work with andy circus who's just fantastic the best. And- yeah well I, you know i mean i can't ask i mean i can't not ask about it obviously last six months of your life i imagine have to be pretty insane with queen's gambit and that being the most viewed show on netflix ever you know what what was that experience like because i know that script was wasn't it circling hollywood for like 15 years you know, it was, it was a long yeah, it was time. around for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Heath Ledger was even on board to make his directorial debut with that story um, as a movie, I believe. Um, yeah. I mean, several people have tried to pick it up, but I, I don't think anyone really had the guts to fund it properly because everyone was like, well, it's about chess. Yeah. And how big of an audience are we going to get? It's all about chess. And it's serious chess too. Um, but it was off the back of Godless, so it's the same director, same writer, and oh, same, amazing. same key crew. So you had the great rapport um, so already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so Scott, uh, you know, called me up, and um, I think he got the trust from Netflix as well. You know, Godless did well, and it was really well done. And also, that can be a bit funny sometimes. And you know, westerns aren't always the most popular things either. Yeah. Um, so I think they they trusted him to a certain extent, and they thought, okay, well. Let's 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 see if this show about chess can work. Yeah. If anyone can do it, maybe this guy can. Yeah. Um, so he gave it a go and he called me up and said, look, I've got this character for you that I think you can really do. Um, do you want to do it? And I had such an amazing time on Godless um, and loved working with him. I think he's super talented as a writer and as a director and as a, just a kind of filmmaker. His knowledge of film is insane. Wow. Um, so I 
before I even read the script, I didn't really care. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm in. I do it. I do it so I can work with great people and and get to play around and, and was have fun that with characters. Digging into the chess world was that you know I imagine you had to learn to play of, of some kind of capacity. You know, was that a fun experience? You know, digging into a world that a lot of people just don't know about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such a kind of insular little world. Um, which only it only involves two people at a time. You yeah, know? it's uh, it's it's two people sat opposite each other, moving bits of wood around, and then one wins and one loses, and that's yeah. it. Um, it's not even cinematically that dynamic or exciting. Um, yeah. So to try and make that exciting every episode is quite a challenge, I'm sure. Um, but learning from these guys, and we had uh, we had some amazing tutors on set who. Um, you know, obsessed, I would say, is a good word in the yeah. world of chess. And the design of the actual, each game was designed and, and was taken from a real game that happened in real life, in history. Oh, wow. And was used, um, they're famous games that are used because the moments of play kind of represent the, the, the characters that we're portraying. Like, they took it very seriously, the chess. Yeah. Um, it was very detailed. And if you know what you're doing, you, you can look through it and you can pick it apart. I think Magnus Carson, um, he's he's kind of picked apart. I watched a video of him picking apart certain games and talking about uh, the beauty and the elegance of these moves in relation to what's going on in the story. Yeah. So he he kind of picked up on it. And I think if you know chess, you can. There, there's a story within the actual games that we play, which is, you know, I love detail like that. Well, and I also think I got to say you had the best style of all the characters. I mean, those <laughs> those leather jackets and the fedoras, man, some some good work there with the I don't know if that was you or the costume designer, but you, you look great, man. Little bit of me, but mainly, <laughs> mainly costume designer. Our costume designer was amazing. That's so cool, man. Well, congratulations on all that success. And we're here to talk about Dragon Rider. You know, how did this come your way? Mm. This, I mean, um, some downtime, nothing going on. And then someone calls up and goes, look, there's a, a fun little animation. It takes two days to record. It's going on the weekend. You did it and, two uh, days? You get to play a dragon. Two days, yeah. No way. It's amazing. That's so brilliant, man. Is yeah. that, I mean, I know you voiced that other show for a really long time, but was this your first time doing a proper animation film? Uh, I think it might have been, actually. Yeah, I think it was. All the way through, yeah, I think I think so. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. So you come in and, and bang it all out in two days, which is actually quite nice because you get a you get a good run of you get an idea of the whole story, and you can keep the consistency within the voice quite a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it was really fun, and I, you know, I get to play a dragon, and uh, um, and there's I, I think it's it's a it's a nice little story that in, uh, it talks about. Um, the world and um you know these characters travel around the world basically looking for a better quality of life that encompasses both the mythical magical creatures of the world and also this species that's kind of completely taken over the world which is our species yeah um and about kind of having to bring those bring nature and um bring the nature back to humanity and yeah. uh, i thought it was done in um in a really quite cleverly sweet way, not to kind of shove it down your throat, but something that's very palatable and, um, and, a, good and, movie and a fun for the adventure times. for little kids. Yeah, that's what, yeah. I, I, we yeah. need it right now in the world, you know? And I think that, so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great, man. Well, you know, I, 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 I'd love to have you come back sometime because I know you got other places to be today. So I, I, let's do it again, brother. I got two final questions for you, though. Um, you know, it's okay. obviously been... A very strange time in the world, you know, it's pretty, I, I, I don't think humans have really experienced something like this in, in a long time. And, and I'm curious, you know, with all the craziness going on, not just, you know, with politics, but with the world, what's been keeping you inspired? Hmm. Um, um, the, the few interactions that I do get to have with people. Uh, it's made me realize how important other people are. Um, we're, we're a very sociable bunch and I think we like other people. And the fact that we've been forced to separate from one another, I think that's left us all a little bit anxious. And yeah. um, so when I do get those moments where I, I do get to connect with someone and I, and I get to look into their eyes now, maybe I even get to see their mouth. It's not in a mask. And 
Um, it's it's I, I I enjoy that um, because you know you go outside and everyone has to wear these masks and everyone has to keep their distance from one another and you know that's important and we have to to stop the spread of this thing. But yeah. we, it just goes against um, what is so um, so human uh, to be tactile um, yeah. uh, and to be caring. Um, it yeah. is quite hard. Uh, but that uh, that's been motivating me that and also I look outside and I I see nature kind of I live in London oh. in the first lockdown um, nature just kind of came up and just enjoyed itself because it didn't have human beings trampling yeah. it. it was amazing that the birds were going nuts every day the flowers yeah. were particularly good and so I was just I would get off and just kind of seeing nature bloom yeah um are you able to no, take walks I, I know you guys are in lockdown but can you go to like Hyde Park if you want to or you know, just get lost for a yes. bit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think the parks have been a saving grace for everyone, really. You can just, you, uh, you the, the rules are you, you can do, uh, oh God, I don't know. They change the rules all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, you can do exercise. There's a certain amount of exercise that you can do in outdoor and yeah, you know, everything you need, you need to get some air into your lungs. Um, that's also important. So that's yeah, true. no, the parks have been great. Um, and uh, man, you know, for, for all the actors listening, you know, the young Thomases or, you know, anyone at, at really any age, you know, it's it's such an arduous career and we're in this pandemic and it's really tough. But any any words of wisdom or advice for, you know, I don't want to just say actors, but artists out there. Um, go with your gut, go with your gut instinct. Don't, I mean, be inspired, but don't don't replicate don't try and be anyone else or don't yeah don't feel that you need to be anyone else um the fact that you have a drive to do anything creative means that it stems from a part of you that is genuine and unique and a lot of people lose that by trying to replicate someone else and i think that's really important to hold on to you with everything be, you do be unapologetically yourself don't try to be someone else exactly yeah that's amazing Man, Thomas, I, mean, I, I think saying? that's very important. I think that goes very far. I think that I think that gets you very far. Actually, well, it's gotten you very far when they and, see that. And and I love how <laughs> humble you've been so able far. to stay. Man, you're you're an, you're an icon, brother. You you really been such an inspiration Thank you very to much, me. Man. And I I love watching you work. And dude, you're about to be shot out of a cannon. You know, man, you're going to take over the world, and it it means so <laughs> much. You know, in this business. You know, sometimes it's it's not always merit, but it's great when it does happen. And it's so beautiful to watch justice prevail for you, man. And I'm so excited for all the things that are going to come. Well, thank you very much. You're very nice and very full of compliment, but it's it's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, brother, thank you so much for coming on. I hope we get to do this again someday and, and take care of yourself. And love yeah, it. that'd be cool. Yeah. Good. And, uh, and you yeah. too, man. You too. Yeah. R- write a record, man. We'll do it. We'll do it next episode. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome, brother. Have fun. Take care. Cool, man. All right. Bye bye. I am thrilled to announce that An Actor Despairs is partnering with a wonderful CBD company called Kind Farms. Everyone out there has heard of CBD. I started taking it a few years ago when I first started getting sober and to help with my anxiety. Sadly, as one can do, I was overtraining in the gym and a friend recommended a topical and a tincture to help with the pain. I tried it. It was okay. However, recently, I was introduced to a product that has really changed my life. Not only has it helped me with anxiety, but I am stronger than I have ever been. I'm able to carry out lifts my body used to prevent me from doing. Kind Farm products have single-handedly changed my life athletically and personally. They utilize 100% local licensed farmers, organic cultivation, and CO2 extraction for superior CBD. Kind Farms is turning CBD to a kind alternative to pharmaceuticals. Let's transform tobacco row into hemp row. If you want to get involved, please reach out. Together, we can make a difference. You can use my code RYAN10 for 10% off. You can find them on Instagram at Kind Farms Inc. All one word. That's K I N D P H A R M S I N C. And their website is kindfarmsinc.com. Once again, my code for 10% off is Ryan10.